this is a public service announcement. What we have is a power outage. No details have been released yet. All we know is there have been no accidents along the way, so everybody sit tight. Do not panic. Light those candles and just stand still until we get more information distributed to you. All right, all right, nobody panic. It's just a power outage is all. Everybody stay put while I grab some flashlights, keep the refrigerator doors closed, and start unplugging any electronics so our stuff doesn't fry from a power surge coming back online, if it does. In the meantime, I'm going to go figure out what happened. This is probably the most significant ransomware attack on one of our critical infrastructures ever. Flono Pipeline is the operator of the largest pipeline carrying fuel from the Gulf Coast to the Northeast. It was hit with a ransomware attack. And last month, hackers took our gasoline hostage. Now they're attacking our meat supply. JBS says units in Australia and North America were hit over the weekend by what the company is calling an organized cyber attack on its information system. The U.S. recently faced a series of ransomware attacks, and they aren't showing signs of slowing down anytime soon. Although ransomware has really been around since 2013, it has not yet been seriously taken in terms of something that could impact a critical infrastructure such as the pipeline. Ransomware, a program that hackers use to hold digital information hostage, has become the top choice of malware for criminals. Violated. They have gotten into our network and into places that we don't know where they've gotten. Um, we don't know what systems they have touched. It is definitely a, a moment of realization that the things you thought you were protected from, the layers that you had in place, they wrote around them. They customized their attack and wrote systems to infiltrate and destroy. So what led to the rise of ransomware in the U.S. and what makes it so difficult to fight them? What makes ransomware so effective is its capability to entirely disrupt an enterprise or infrastructure like the Colonial Pipeline. It usually makes its way in via a phishing email or network connection that isn't secured, encrypting the victim's file to prevent access. The malicious actor then demands a ransom in exchange for decrypting the files held hostage. Like if you had a question about a product, and that's how you get the conversation going is you start a conversation within the chat that's on their site. If the victim makes up their mind to pay the ransom and the amount is negotiated, the payment is made via cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is the most popular choice, accounting for 98% of ransomware payments in the first quarter of 2019. That may change now that U.S. officials were able to seize 2.3 million in Bitcoin paid to hacker group DarkSide following the Colonial Pipeline attack. Once the payments have been made, the criminals send a decryption key, and the cycle goes on to repeat itself with another vulnerable business or infrastructure. These groups have become increasingly bold, showing off bundles of cash and fancy sports cars. That's because tracking, arresting, and bringing these hackers to justice is incredibly difficult. It's notoriously difficult to attribute um, cyber attacks. It's um, an ongoing challenge for governments. And so from an organization's perspective, whether it's a criminal group or whether it's a nation-backed group, um, it often has little consequence. A lot of these organizations... This is Rick with Tech Raven Solutions. And if you're watching this, there's a good chance that you're not in a powerless environment right now. However, if you are, we are that much more incredibly happy that you're joining us today, and please, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to our channel so you can see firsthand our latest content. Thank you guys so much. As our world becomes more and more reliant on technology, we too have become increasingly vulnerable to cyber attacks, and one of the most concerning targets of such attacks is the power grid. A cyber attack on the power grid could result in widespread blackouts, causing chaos and potentially endangering lives. So in this video, we're going to examine the potential consequences of such an attack along with the motivations behind such attacks and the steps taken to prevent them. ...have grown 150% since 2018, with ransom demands sometimes growing to tens of millions of dollars. To begin with, the potential aftermath of a cyber attack on the power grid could be ever so catastrophic. A widespread blackout could result in the deprivation of vital services such as hospitals, water treatment plants, and transportation systems. This could lead to no kidding, pandemonium, and in some instances, put lives at risk. Besides, companies and individuals dependent on electricity would encounter significant losses triggering economic upheaval. An assault on the power grid could be ruinous, causing both immediate harm and long-term destruction to the affected region's infrastructure. 
Secondly, the incentives for attacks on the power grid are incredibly diverse. Cyber criminals could be motivated by financial gain and hold the power grid hostage for ransom. Conversely, they might have political motivations aiming to destabilize a nation's infrastructure and create widespread disorder. Lastly, the certain hackers may launch attacks for ideological reasons, using them as means of protesting against a corporation or a government. This is what Iranian state TV meant to show. But in the most audacious protest yet, hackers broadcast an image of the Ayatollah with a target on his head and told viewers to rise up and join them. The wide-eyed disbelief as the presenter reappears speaks volumes. In all cases, these attacks stem from the belief that it is possible to exploit vulnerabilities in the power grid's infrastructure. Thirdly, numerous measures are being taken every day to prevent cyber attacks on the power grid. First measure involves setting up firewalls and intrusion detection systems that can identify and stop unauthorized access to the grid's infrastructure. Furthermore, periodic vulnerability assessments and penetration testing can pinpoint and resolve possible vulnerabilities before they're even exploited. The second measure is the adoption of secure protocols and encryption technologies to safeguard sensitive data and communications across different sections of the power grid. Ultimately, stringent access control measures and user authentication protocols can guarantee that only authorized personnel are permitted to access vital systems. With all of this, let's talk about one of the biggest thorns in our sides as far as critical infrastructure goes, and that is none other than Russia. Why is Russia such a concern? Well, because they are one of the most capable nations that could affect our power grid. In 2015, a section of Ukraine's power grid was taken down by an attacker, and while the perpetrator remained unidentified, geopolitical circumstances and forensic evidence suggested Russian involvement. A year later, Russian hackers targeted a transmission level substation, resulting in a power outage of Kiev. Former Admiral Michael Rogers, the director of the NSA, testified before Congress in 2014 that China and a few other nations could potentially shut down the U.S. power grid as well. Almost catastrophic failures if we don't take action. There shouldn't be any doubt in our minds that there are nation states and groups out there that have the capability to do that. To enter our systems, to enter those industrial control systems, and to shut down, forestall our ability to operate our basic infrastructure. We are now at the point where even countries such as Iran, which is a staunch adversary of the United States, could actually acquire such capabilities. Now, due to the rapid digitization, inadequate investment in uh, cybersecurity, and weak regulatory oversight, the U.S. power grid is vulnerable to cyber attacks potentially more than systems in other regions. A malicious actor with the ability to exploit the U.S. power grid vulnerabilities might attempt to carry out such an attack under several different circumstances. A cyber attack on the power grid could be part of a well-coordinated military campaign or serve as a signaling mechanism during a crisis. It could also be the punitive measure taken in response to U.S. actions in other areas as well. In each instance, the United States should consider not only the potential damage and disruption from the attack, but also its broader effects on U.S. actions at the time. A cyber attack could lead to significant power losses across a very large portion of the United States, lasting days, weeks, some areas, maybe even months, resulting in substantial economic costs, and more importantly, most likely there's a lot of lives that are going to be lost. Additionally, the United States response or lack of response could negatively impact its interest. Therefore, it is absolutely crucial for the United States to take measures to prevent a cyber attack on its power grid and reduce the potential harm if preventative efforts fail. So to talk about the power grid a little bit, let's get an idea of how big this thing really is. The US power system has evolved into a highly complex enterprise that contains 3,300 utilities that work together to deliver power through 200,000 miles of high voltage transmission lines, 55,000 substations, and 5.5 million miles of distribution lines that bring power to millions of homes and businesses. Any of these elements, power generation, transmission, or distribution could be targeted for a cyber attack. 
In the Ukrainian crisis, hackers targeted substations that lower transmission voltages for distribution to consumers. Now regardless of which part of the power grid is targeted, attackers would need to conduct extensive research, gain initial access to utility business networks, likely through spear phishing, also work to move through the business networks to gain access to control systems, and then identify targeted systems and develop the capability to actually disable them. So there's a lot of sophisticated actions that would require these extensive planning by an organization able to actually recruit and coordinate a team that has a broad set of capabilities and is also willing to devote many months, if not years, to such an effort. State actors such as Russia, North Korea, Iran, These are just to name a few, but these guys are most likely the perpetrators, and given along these lead times, the United States adversaries have likely already begun this process in anticipation of conflict. Now, it is very doubtful that a terrorist organization would have both the intent and the means to actually carry out such an attack successfully. In the future, however, criminal groups could really pose a real threat. They are growing in sophistication and in some cases rival, if not exceed, the capabilities of actual nation states. Payments for ransomware, malicious software that encrypts data and will not provide a code to unlock it unless a ransom has been paid, by some estimates, have no kidding top $300 million. Now this funding could grow and allow criminal groups to purchase more sophisticated capabilities to actually carry out the ultimate ransomware attack. Now, the likelihood that an attack carried out by a determined and capable adversary would be thwarted by security measures is actually pretty low. While some United States utilities might block attempts by an adversary to gain initial access, or might be able to detect an adversary in their systems, many might not have the, the necessary tools in place to actually detect and respond. Efforts to improve data sharing could actually enable detection by one company to block access across the entire industry are there in their infancy. Now one thing to keep in mind though, such an attack, depending on its impact, really could generate a very unpredictable response by the United States. However, considerable potential exists to miscalculate both the impact of a cyber attack on the United States power grid and exactly how the US government might respond. Attacks could very easily inflict much greater damage than intended, in good part because many of the health and safety systems that depend on electricity could very easily fail as well resulting in widespread injuries and fatalities. Given the fragility of many industrial control systems, even reconnaissance activity risks uh, fragility and accidentally could be causing harm. An adversary could also underestimate the ability of the United States to actually attribute the source of a cyber attack with the important implications for what happens thereafter. Thus, an adversary's expectations that it could actually attack the power grid anonymously and with impunity could be unfounded. In conclusion, cyber attacks on the power grid are a very significant threat. They shouldn't be taken lightly by any means, but they also have the potential to cause catastrophic consequences. Hackers may be motivated by a numerous different amounts of other things such as uh, financial gain, political motives, uh, they could be ideological as well. However, there are several steps being taken to prevent such attacks, including the implementation of uh, firewalls, uh, intrusion detection systems, vulnerability assessments, secure protocols, and encryption technologies, and strict access to those control measures. It is extremely essential that governments and corporations take this threat seriously and actually invest in the necessary resources to protect the power grid's infrastructure from cyber attacks. Only through a comprehensive and proactive approach can we actually ensure the safety and security of our power grid and essential services that rely on it. With that, we've seen throughout time where certain cyber threat actors have targeted our actual power grid, but nothing major has come of it. Yet. It's one of those that the most other nation state actors know that as soon as they conduct such an attack like this, where many American lives are lost, you might as well pretty much chalk that up as another 9-11, probably just with less rules of engagement. Once again, we really hope that you enjoyed this video as we talked about the vulnerabilities of our power grid, its infrastructure, and also the challenges it poses to those who wish to conduct harm to it. As again, this is Rick with Tech Raven Solutions. We really hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and like and subscribe as it'll help our channel grow and we'll keep the lights on for you.